We need to talk about Core Keeper because it has consumed my time and my mind. Welcome back to Cozy Bichota. New hair, new game, new hyperfixation. So in this video, we are going to be talking about Core Keeper and why I can't stop playing it. I have been following Core Keeper since it was announced in early access and available to play in that phase. But normally I stay away from early access games and didn't find my inclination towards buying it because there are pros and cons to early access. But let me explain what early access is. Early access is a version of the game where players pay to access it in earlier stages, such as alpha or beta stages. It's a way for developers to release the game, receive funds and get feedback from players as they continue to develop it towards a full release. There are times when games simply stay in early access for various reasons and never move forward from there, which is where my hesitation comes with the game, since then I never get a full release of it. However, there are times, like Core Keeper, where the game is in early access, you get to play it during its different stages, give some feedback, and watch as it develops into a full game. Core Keeper came up a bunch of times as a suggested game, and I wishlisted it, unwishlisted it, wishlisted it again, and couldn't decide if this was a game that I really wanted to play. However, now that it is in full release, I was heavily influenced by my friend Evie, who said that this was a game you just needed to get. What caught my attention about the game were the graphics and the sandbox style of gaming. I like to compare this as a Minecraft meets Stardew Valley combination. And I've been saying that since I started playing the game, and I think it's a perfect way of describing it. After playing more than 10 hours of this game, I think I'm close to about 15 at this point. I can highly recommend it, and I think it's enough time for me to be able to talk about why you should get it if you want to get it, and give my honest review of the game. So to get it out of the way, let me talk about just the few tiny things that I don't like about the game so far. If you are a Steam Deck user, it really makes your Steam Deck get really hot. I know that there are ways to optimize your Steam Deck so you're not using the highest settings for games that don't require them. However, I'm not one of those people that is inclined to immediately start messing around with the settings on my Steam Deck. Instead, just want to pick up my Steam Deck and play it. So that is my one little con right there when it comes to the Steam Deck. It gets really hot and you can really hear the fans when playing. My other little caveat is that the buttons on the Steam Deck might not be ridiculously intuitive as it would be playing keyboard and mouse. So I found myself having to play around a little bit to familiarize myself. While keyboard and mouse is very, very simple with the right click, left click, clicking some of the different keys such as E and M to access different parts of the game or the shift key for your overall inventory. So I found that to be a little bit easier as well as when it comes to having to decorate, it's a little bit easier to navigate with your mouse but it's not a deal breaker with controller. I actually found that once you got yourself acclimated with the controller, it wasn't too bad at all. Another point with the customization part when you're building your character, I love that they do give you different features for hair and skin color, but I still think that there could have been more. And I'm not sure if that's something that might come along later on in the development of the game with any updates, but I did find that the hair was minimal and as someone with curly hair, it's always really hard to find curly hair in games and try to be portrayed as best as possible. So I end up trying to go with the wavy version or space muds or something that could resemble it to the best, as well as the color options for skin. Although they did have various ones, I still don't think they had enough. And I know the whole purpose of the game is that you're exploring these mines and uncovering different areas of the game as you're moving along to find different biomes. But sometimes having to come across a boss or an enemy that you've never seen before in the dark can be very startling. So maybe just a little bit of light there when you're being introduced to something brand new instead of just coming across it completely in the dark. That might just be me as more of a casual player and not really assuming that something's gonna jump scare me or that I might not be equipped with the right tool in the moment to attack but that's just one little tiny thing, not a deal breaker whatsoever. But for right now, those might be the only cons that I've come across in my gameplay time. 
So let's talk about all the pros. And first I wanna mention the graphics. I am a sucker when it comes to pixel art. That is where the Stardew Valley vibes come into play. I feel it is very reminiscent of being in the mines and going deeper in them. There are monsters to fight, but not as common everywhere. Pixel art draws a lot of nostalgia for me and is an easy way to suck me into a game. I love the gentle colors and the depth and design at the same time. Second are the different play modes, which is something that I am very happy about for the sandbox game. In terms of how it reminds me of Minecraft, I know there is a survival mode where you build and fight and try to survive in your world, as well as a creative mode. Forekeeper has that as well. I have been playing it in casual mode, so I still have enemies to fight off, but also not being swarmed, so I can decorate as much as possible. The other thing that I really like about it is that I can respawn and not lose my playthrough. There's the other option of respawning and having to start from the very beginning, but being able to not lose my progress and everything that I've done, even if it means that I have to go back to where I died to pick up the stuff that fell off of me in my main inventory, I'm totally okay with that. It is the perfect little balance and offering different modes caters to different players. And while we talk about modes, you can easily play with keyboard and mouse or controller and yes, it does run smoothly on the Steam Deck. Third would be the biomes. I really enjoy discovering the different biomes, looking at the different colors, the resources that they offer. I think that's really unique. The more you dig, the more you wander into different areas of the map and discover different biomes. So far, I have come across green areas, sand areas, farm areas, play areas, and what looks like some stone area. I have so much to discover still. Each player's playthrough is different, which I really love. You unlock more areas of the map the more you dig. Basically, you start at the main core and the rest of the map is blank until you start digging away. And the different areas offer different resources and enemies. And there are moments where I become a little ambushed with the different ones and have to rethink strategy so I can then discover the area a little bit more calmly. My favorite enemy so far being the mushies. Fourth would be the option to play both as a solo run through or even a co-op playthrough with your friends. And this part of the game is what reminded me of Sunhaven. And if you're not sure about Sunhaven, it's a farming sim in more of a magical realm that also offers you the ability to play co-op. I love the ability to make different characters for yourself and choose which character you want to play with your co-op game. So if in your personal file, you are at level 30 in combat, you might want to use your character in a co-op game with that level, or maybe just start brand new, fresh, and make a new character. You basically create different worlds, like in Minecraft, and can share which one to invite friends into. The game is fun both in solo runs and with friends, and if you ever feel like you need some help from friends in your world, you can invite them over. And there is no commitment to having them in your world such as a house being generated every single time you invite a friend to play. So I've come to really love co-op games because of these features. If the diversity that you could really do in this game, and this ties a little bit more with the biomes as well, I mean exploring the map and carving out the way you want your map to be shaped out, as well as what biomes you'd like to predominantly have in your world. So if you want biomes that are filled with farming biomes you could do strictly that if you want biomes filled with enemies or grungy mind vibes you can do that as well i love that you discover different biomes and are not obligated to keep them you can break down the walls ground move trees flowers bushes create rivers or lakes and care for animals or use them for meat but once you see how cute the cows are you won't want to. On top of it, you can name your animals. And I know there are animals that I haven't come across yet that I'm super excited about. Normally, I am not a fan of having to make a million different crafting benches or workstations, but I actually look forward to it in Core Keeper because it just means I have more ways to decorate and personalize my core. Sixth would be the customization and building off my last point a little bit, I do really like being able to customize your character, for example, and there are various ways to customize your character from the initial way your character looks, body type, color, hair, eyes, to finding themed outfits and boosts scattered throughout the biomes, 
to unlocking more advanced crafting benches and workstations that allow you to change the color of your walls and items. Having the ability to take control of how you customize, I feel is not only enjoyable, but a perk because you can make the game more reflective of you and you spend more time in game really catering to your likes. And my final point, which is my seventh point, is being able to have all of these different quality of life features. When you are creating your character, you can pick what type of character you want to be, whether it's a mage or fighter or gardener amongst many others. You also have the ability of reinforcing your tools and fixing them rather than having to craft a brand new one. You get hungry reminders so you don't forget to replenish your energy with food, mines that you come across and hit that help explode areas for you, which can be a pro or con because it can be a little detrimental if you've worked really hard on an area and didn't mean for it to explode. Crafting some basic items on your person without the need of a bench. Saving at any point in the game. Making beds to restore energy. No mini games whatsoever. So the focus is really on the sandbox mode and so much more. I still have so much more to discover in Core Keeper, but I can safely say at this point in the gameplay and having invested the hours that I have that I would highly recommend the game. And this is a great game if you want to enjoy a sandbox game either solo or with friends. I hope this also encourages me to really try Minecraft out and give it a chance. And I like the ability to be able to get creative and put together a world. So Core Keeper has really been a great time. I am so excited to see the creativity in people's cores and any challenges that might arise with the game. In the comments below, let me know if you've tried out Core Keeper, what you've liked about the game, what you wish to see in the game, or if you've never heard about the game until now. And if you really like cozy and gaming content, consider subscribing to the channel, giving this video a like, or maybe coming in and hanging out in a stream. And from one bichota to another, stay cozy and see you next time. Adios.